I spent hours listening to former Mormons tell their stories. Many of these people wanted nothing more than to prove that their Mormon beliefs were true. Time after time, I heard the pain as they realized the lie and were forced to accept the truth. Although the details changed, I heard the same basic story told many times. The questions arose not because the members fell under the sway of evil anti-Mormon activists or because somehow they came across anti-Mormon literature. The first story I heard was of a young man preparing for his mission. He felt that in order to properly do the work of the Mormon church and to preach to non-believers, he needed to have a firm understanding of his faith. He had questions and sought clarification. He did not have doubts and did not seek to prove the LDS false. He had faith, but he wanted knowledge to deepen his faith. The opposite occurred. Questions grew, and his faith in the truth of the LDS dissolved. This is a story told by Sandra Tanner of her husband, Gerald Tanner's quest for truth as a teenager during the late 1950s. Instead of relying on the LDS standard answers to questions about the origins of Mormonism, Mr. Tanner did his own research. He read early sources and talked to many people. After years of study, he finally left the LDS. He and his wife, Sandra, also an ex-Mormon, devoted their lives to helping other people discover the truth about Mormonism. Mr. Tanner died almost 10 years ago, but their work continues at Utah Lighthouse Ministries, which can be found on the internet and has a huge library of information about Mormonism. Another story that I heard was that of Earl Eskine, Erskine, probably mispronouncing his name. I found him in an episode of Heart of the Matter, a live video broadcast show based in Utah, where he told his story of his journey out of Mormonism. From the beginning of this 2001 episode, I knew there was something different about his story. At the time of the show, Mr. Erskine was still a member of the LDS and still had a temple of recommend, and his changed beliefs were unknown to the LDS. Like Mr. Tanner, Mr. Erskine did not set out to prove the LDS false. He was simply following the 2005 challenge of LDS President Gordon B. Hinckley to read the Book of Mormon in one year. Mr. Erskine did just that. In fact, he finished early and he challenged himself to read the 1830s publication. This brought out questions. Why were there differences? If the Book of Mormon was the most perfect book ever written, why the changes? These changes were also theologically significant. The God of the 1830s edition was eternal and of one being with Jesus and the Holy Spirit. The current version teaches that God is ex an exalted man, Elohim. And it took six years of study and prayer before Mr. Erskine renounced the LDS. While the L Utah Lighthouse Ministries provides wonderful and factual information about Mormonism, most Mormons will never read any of it. They are told to avoid the Tanners, avoid anything that will cause them to lose their testament, Avoid anything that's anti-Mormon. Avoid researching into troubling aspects of their faith. Instead, put it on a shelf. Elder Dolan Oaks, Quorum of the Twelve Apostles, states the LDS mindset quite succinctly. It is wrong to criticize the leaders of the church, even if that criticism is true. 